you, yes you, should learn to use a CAD software. It's super useful and you can learn for free or cheap. Here's my reasoning. Hello everybody, welcome back to your weekday weekend. My name is Adam. Forgive me for reading off of my computer screen, but for this one I needed to write a script. So here we go. Look around you. Look at your phone, your computer, your TV, your chair, your lamp. Someone designed those things. Someone sat down on a computer, or if the thing you're looking at is really old, with a pencil and graph paper, and typed or wrote down exactly how that object should look. Someone typed into a computer that the original iPhone should be 115 millimeters by 61 millimeters. Someone drew the circles that make up the buttons on your game controller. With the increasing availability of additive manufacturing, that is, 3D printing, the usefulness of parametric CAD to the layperson becomes exponentially larger. My reasoning can actually be explained with another topic, computer coding. In the mid-1900s, computers were being developed behind closed doors at universities and laboratories. They cost a fortune to manufacture only one unit, and you needed college degrees just to perform basic actions on them. It took up entire rooms. 99% of Americans during this time would have no way to access such technology, and thus, they had no reason to know how to use it. However, with the invention of microprocessors, home computers were suddenly widely available. The science fiction-like dream of having a small, affordable computer in the average American household quickly became modern reality. That reality created demand. A demand for the next generation to learn how to use their computers. Schools were teaching Microsoft Basic all the way through the 90s. Computers were soon seen as a necessity, and learning to use them was an even bigger necessity. But as computers became smarter and did tasks more automatically, it would seem that that idea shifted. For me at least, computers were on the back end of my education. We were allowed to use a computer for a project only after we learned to do it by hand. You won't have a calculator with you all the time, they'd say. That statement would soon be proven wrong as smartphones slowly became more popular. In 2007, Apple released the iPhone and suddenly smartphones were everywhere. Now, home computers were old news, and the world was shifting. In your pocket, you could now have more computing power than those 80s home computers ever had. In 2014, my senior year of high school, I remember convincing my graphic design teacher to let us participate in the Hour of Code, a new movement at the time. Their aim was to change the narrative back to what it used to be. Computers aren't going away, and it's important that people learn to use them, especially children. Let's get back to CAD. In the recent past, CAD was really useful only to businesses, those who had machinery and money to produce their designs. There was little to no reason for someone without access to such resources to know how to use CAD at all. Now, it's 2024 and 3D printing has been available in a home setting at an affordable price for a few years. Although skeptics claim 3D printing is only good for making knickknacks and toys, 3D printing really does offer a ton when it comes to solving real world problems. To those skeptics, I would compare 3D printing to injection molding. Injection molding allows millions of plastic toys and knickknacks to be manufactured, but it also is a manufacturing method of choice for tons of practical plastic items. Look at the trim in your car, the plastic pieces on your power tools, or even plastic dishware. I digress. Knowing how to use a CAD software could allow you, with the advent of 3D printing, to solve problems around your house in mere minutes. For example, my countertop ice maker didn't come with a place to put the scoop. Before I knew how to use a proper parametric CAD software, I designed this part in Tinkercad in about 5 minutes. It took around 25 minutes to print on my old N3 V2 Neo, and with a little piece of double-sided tape, I fixed my problem in only a half hour, and that model became the first model I ever uploaded to printables. I wanted a little case to put some spare batteries in my backpack for my Xbox controller. Same story. My dog kept pulling her tag off of her collar. A new tag cost a fortune at the pet store, and she broke off those dangling tags at least three times. I designed this tag to save some money and prevent her from pulling the tag off. My computer monitor didn't fit on the shelf I wanted to put it on because the stand was too tall. I designed a new short stand and it works fine. I wanted a little mini shelf to put some of my knickknacks on. I designed this one to fit on my existing shelf mounts and it's perfect. Didn't even have to drill extra holes into the wall. 
Just today, I had to fix some plumbing on my kitchen sink, and rather than make a third trip to Menards, I opted to design my own fix and use 3D printing, and it fixed my issue. Many of the things I've designed don't even have a store equivalent. I couldn't go to the store and buy an ice scoop holder, for example. At least not one that would fit the scoop I have. I couldn't go to the store and buy a different stand for my monitor, especially since it doesn't use base amounts. Some of the things I've designed do have in-store equivalents, but I still saved time and money by doing it myself. Okay, but isn't CAD expensive? Like, doesn't professional CAD software cost thousands of dollars? Well, yes, it can, but you're not a professional. At least, not yet. You're a hobbyist. And for similar reasons to those I've just mentioned, many CAD companies are offering their software for a reduced cost, or even for free, for hobbyist use cases. Each offering is different. Watch the video up there in the corner for my personal feelings on the CAD offerings available right now. But here's the TLDR of that video, plus some info on contenders that I didn't mention in that video. Onshape is free, but their terms of service is sketchy and they allow no commercial use whatsoever. Not even a little bit. It's also cloud-based, which is cool, but you could lose everything if they go bust or discontinue their software. But it's fully featured and powerful CAD software in your browser, and it's where I first learned parametric CAD myself. So if the caveats don't worry you, then it's a good option. Fusion 360 has a free version, but it has limitations compared to the full version, which costs thousands per year if you go over the free version's commercial limitations. They also sell your data to anyone and everyone according to their privacy policy. But it's extremely popular in the hobbyist community, probably the most popular among the biggest 3D printing YouTube channels, and thus there's a lot of coverage in how to use it, so it's still a good option. SolidWorks has a very affordable hobbyist version, but they also have limitations for commercial use that if you go over, the real SolidWorks license is so expensive that they don't even list a price on their website. The hobbyist version is also cloud-based, which has the same potential problems as Onshape, which was derived from SolidWorks, by the way. But SolidWorks is also the industry standard for businesses, which means skills in SolidWorks may go a lot further for getting a job than other CAD experience would if you want to do CAD professionally. So it's still a good option. FreeCAD is really and truly 100% free, but the software is hard to use, doesn't use industry standard nomenclature or methodology, it tends to throw errors, and it can be hard to get help from other FreeCAD users. Here's a comment thread from a previous FreeCAD video which explains how I feel about FreeCAD. It starts with a comment from one of my favorite CAD YouTubers, who I'll talk about later, and then I reply to him. Pause and read. It is the only traditional parametric CAD option that I know of that is really, truly, 100% free. So it's still a good option. Tinkercad is free, but it's also owned by Autodesk, who are the same people behind Fusion 360, so who knows how much info they'll collect on you. It's also limited, as it's meant to be simple for really quick and easy projects to teach children. And it's also cloud-based, so it has the same worries that I have with the other cloud options. But it's by far the simplest and easiest to use, for those with zero experience for just getting your design on a computer screen, and thus, it's still a good option. Alibre is my CAD software of choice. Watch this disclosure video here for more info on my relationship with them. But simply know that my opinions are my own and I'm not obligated to say anything other than my honest opinions, and that Alibre is not a sponsor of my channel. However, in the United States of America at least, Alibre Atom 3D costs only $200 for a lifetime license. It's often on sale for cheaper than that, it's not cloud-based, they don't sell your info to anyone, and they have a free trial. Right now they're only on Windows, but I've heard unofficial rumors that they're working on getting onto other platforms soon. But for the cost of performance, especially because they offer a lifetime license unlike literally anyone else, and their lifetime cost is much cheaper than some other options costs for just one year, Alibre is a good option. Remember that for now you're just learning, so a free option is fine. Once you've learned how parametric CAD works, maybe hop around and try different offerings from other companies until you find the one that's right for you. Okay, but isn't learning CAD expensive? To that I say, what do you do in 2024 whenever you want to learn anything on a basic level? Right, you go to the library. There are tons of books on CAD at your local library, and no matter which software the book may reference, the skills at hand will still be relevant to you. I'm kidding. Kind of. Your local library probably does have books about CAD, but really, YouTube and the rest of the internet are a goldmine when it comes to learning to use a modern parametric CAD software. You can go from complete beginner to an intermediate in only a few weeks without ever spending a dime. Ex Machina Engineering, Joko Engineering Help, 
Teaching Tech, Too Tall Toby, Alibri LMC themselves, and tons of others offer videos on YouTube to help people learn to use CAD. Just like I said with library books, even if the YouTuber isn't using the CAD software you are, a lot of the skills they teach will still be helpful to you. And with that, I encourage you. If you're wanting to try something new, why not CAD? It doesn't cost much to get started. Depending on which software you choose, it could even be free. It may even save you some money by helping you fix problems around the house. Even if you don't own a 3D printer, there are still websites that will print designs for you. Or you could use your new CAD skills to land a new job at a local business. Just like computer programming and home computers, CAD is getting more and more important as the ability for the layperson to manufacture their own parts becomes more achievable. I think you should give it a try. But that's it for now. If you liked this video, like and subscribe and comment. Check out my website down below as well as my Twitch and my Discord for more weekend vibes. And I'll see you next time, next weekend. Bye.